So I've got a question for you. What are we experts on in the UK? What uh, defining uh, knowledge do you have that you can bring to the market to create a profitable trade? There's something that we all know, that we all have an opinion on, um, that we discuss on a daily basis that you can use when you're trading. What is it? Watch the rest of this video. If you're interested in learning to trade on Betfair, then visit the Bet Angel Academy, where you have detailed, structured Betfair trading courses. Or why not visit our website where you can download a free trial of Bet Angel Professional, but also visit the forum where you can get detailed images, examples, and downloadable files. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and click on the bell icon if you want notification of new videos as they're released. So what do we talk about a lot in the UK? We talk about it to strangers, to our friends, our family. Um, we watch it on news all of the time. Everybody has an opinion on it. Everybody discusses it. Everybody is an expert on this particular phenomenon. What is it? It's the weather. And you're sort of thinking, well, how on earth can you trade the weather? Well, the funny thing is there is actually um, a weather market within uh, Betfair. Uh, you can actually bet every year on the highest temperature that it's going to reach in the summer, but that's not what I'm talking about. Um, it's actually related to that. There are plenty of trades where the weather will directly influence the outcome of a market, and therefore you can trade it. Now, probably the best example of this is the completed match market in cricket, because that is actually a completely 100% weather-related market. Uh, cricket matches have to take place over a certain period of time. If they can't, then they'll be truncated or perhaps even abandoned. So the completed match market um, allows you to directly trade the weather. Now, I have mentioned this specifically uh, in the cricket trading video that I did. But basically, if you think that play is going to be abandoned, then it's very often worth getting involved in those markets. And of course, you'll know with plenty of warning whether you think there will be disruption on a certain day. So, you know, everybody watches the forecast, everybody has a comment about the weather, and therefore you'll have a heads up about whether this could potentially affect a cricket match in a few days' time. And as we actually get towards the day of the actual match itself, then you can look in a little bit more detail at um, exactly what's going on on that particular day. And the great thing about looking at weather and the related impact that it has on markets is there is actually a plethora of information available for you now related to the weather. So when I first started trading many years ago, you'd have to rely upon um, what they were saying on the actual commentary, uh, the discussion that they were having, and how um, that was sort of laid out in front of you. There was no sort of additional knowledge that you could get. But the great thing nowadays is we actually get um, radar and precip precipitation radar. I have it on my watch on my phone, you can have a look at a whole variety of sites on the internet that will not only give you a precipitation forecast, but you can actually see where the rain is and where the winds are, what um, speed they are, average gusts, and the direction. So that's spectacularly handy in trying to work out um, if the weather is actually going to affect the sport that you're looking at. So we've started by opening a really obvious one, and that is the completed match market in cricket. It can achieve pretty large turnover and um, has the potential to be a pretty good uh, trading market in its own right. So that is a really, really obvious one. But there are plenty of opportunities that you see um, across a number of different sports. So, you know, one of the areas that I look at consistently for weather patterns, and you'll often see me talking about what the weather forecast is like, is in golf. So when you're looking at Lynx golf, like the British Open, one of the things that you will find is that the Lynx golf, depending upon how the course is situated, will play very differently according to uh, the prevailing wind. So if they're playing the out nine in a certain direction and the in nine in another direction, and you've got wind coming from a certain direction or variable winds, or any, you know, a number of different things, then that will directly affect how um, the odds are moving within the market. So imagine you're teeing off first thing in the morning and the conditions are relatively benign, or perhaps in the evening, but during the day the winds pick up and directly affect um, a certain batch of players. So if you actually look at a golf tournament, you examine the tee times, and then you split those tee times down, then you can start looking at um, how the weather is likely to affect that. 
so it was the open i'm trying to remember um what year it was um i can't remember off the top of my head i will go through my archives and dig it out it blew away once then he went to market and it rolled away again the wind taking it could have gotten lucky the wind could have blown it into the hole and it would have been considered a hold however it blows away so instead of a short 18 inch putt or so for a little tap in now he's looking at five feet and that made it ridiculous but it had a significant impact on the way that the tournament played because in the in the run-up to the cut at a golf tournament um, all of the players are jumbled up you could get um, you know a guy that's probably going to be in contention at the weekend with an amateur um, and as a consequence when they go out it's going to be fairly random in terms of who's going to be where and where they're going to be on that particular course now when we get to the weekend at golf what you will find is that um, all of the players at the tee times are organized so that basically the last couple of groups that uh, reach the 18th green will do so will be the ones that are expected to win the tournament so the tee times change around a little bit so typically if you've got four players um, that are in uh, at the, the, the top of that list and they're playing in, in two separate matches. Well, they're not playing in two separate matches, but you understand what I'm saying. They're two separate groups. That's the word I was looking for. Then they'll be equally affected by all of the conditions. There's not a huge amount of variability there. So in golf, it tends to be um, the order of play, how close the number of shots are at the top. Because, you know, if the conditions are going to go downhill later and, you know, you've got somebody in the clubhouse in the lead, but the conditions are going to worsen significantly for the later groups, then you may find that that affects the scoring and presents an opportunity for you there. So yeah, I mean, I think it was golf was really the one that I cottoned onto first, uh, where the weather was going to have a significant impact in terms of what's going to happen within that particular tournament. So it's worth exploring that. Um, a little bit more complicated in golf because you've got, you know, maybe 156 players or at the cut half that many um, going around and, you know, things get a little bit more complicated. But hopefully I've detailed for you there the two sort of states that occur uh, when tee times are altered or depending upon the groupings within that particular tournament itself. But yeah, you know, there, it applies to a number of different sports. Um, but, you know, I first started taking a bit more of an interest in the weather when I was looking at horse racing because I was interested in asking the question. You know, you'd see some people come out and say, oh, you know, this horse doesn't like this ground or all of this sort of stuff. And I started looking a bit more seriously at how the weather impacted the way that um, that could influence the price on a particular runner. Now sometimes it's a bit ambiguous and you know horses like certain types of ground um, but it you know it's not very clearly defined sometimes so you know you look at some of these sort of things and you're sort of thinking well I'm not sure what information is contained in that or how it's going to influence the price. However you can if you keep your eye out get uh, or pick up on really good trading opportunities and one of those occurred uh, this year at Royal Ascot. So the interesting thing about this was it was really well telegraphed. So if you were going to Royal Ascot this year then you would have known exactly uh, what the weather was likely to be especially if you're going to dress up and stuff. So you would have known in advance what sort of you know whether it was going to be raining which it was at the beginning of the week or was the weather going to improve uh, which it did towards the end of the week. But when we look at the beginning of the week at Royal Ascot this year the weather was pretty poor um, and it looked as though that was going to continue for a couple of days before cheering up as we approached the end of the week. So that brought into play um, a couple of characteristics. So there was a horse called Sea of Class uh, that was trained by William Haggis and they were debating uh, because of the weather conditions whether um, this horse should run or not. So you know there's your first clue they're basically sort of saying, I don't want to run this horse on ground that is soft or getting worse, basically. They want pretty good ground. So typically at most race courses, you will find they try and prepare the course conditions uh, for, for what they're expecting. So, you know, during the flat season, they want sort of good ground, preferably. But it may sort of be good to firm or good to soft. But also, one of the things that you'll notice is that most of the courses in the UK aren't completely straight. The, um, they undulate a fair bit. The topography of the course varies quite a bit. So if you um, go and check out uh, turf tracks, they'll often post up, especially at big meetings like Ascot, they will post up 
um, an image of basically the going of the entire course. So one of the characteristics of Ascot is that the Swinley bottom is lower than the, where the course is near the grandstand. So that tends to retain water a bit more because the water obviously drains towards that. So when you look at the going at Ascot, you will find that Swinley bottom, the going tends to be softer than at the top of the course. So obviously depending upon the race, you may have a little bit of variability in terms of you know, whether it's going to affect a horse or not. But obviously a horse that doesn't like soft ground and has to run through Swinley bottom is probably going to struggle a bit more than a horse that can just run the straight mile. So yeah, um, C of class uh, was flagged up by William Haggis and there was a bit of uncertainty about whether this horse should be running on ground that wasn't particularly suitable for it. And William Haggis sort of came out and said, well, you know what, if the rain continues, then I don't really think that we should be running it. And that was really well publicised. And um, when we got to the Wednesday at Royal Ascot, one of the things that we saw occur was that the weather conditions were particularly bad. Now, because the, uh, there were, it was quite humid, there were sort of like heavy downpours uh, popping up all over the place, and Ascot caught quite a few of those. So everybody thought that Sea of Class wasn't going to run. It was unlikely that we would see Sea of Class running on this particular day. Um, so yeah, the, it was a bit of a surprise when basically Sea of Class, uh, it, because if, if you, the ground is unsuitable for your horse, you can withdraw it. But basically, um, Sea of Class was declared to run in this particular race, so a lot of people were uh, particularly surprised. So let me ask you this question. If you have a horse that's running on ground that isn't suitable for it, um, what do you think is going to happen to the price? Do you think the price will improve? People will start backing it, thinking, well, the ground is unsuitable for this horse, therefore it's got a better chance of winning. Or do you think that the price will drift because of the going? So the answer is fairly obvious, really. If the horse is unlikely to like the ground, it's going to have less chance of winning, and then the price will drift. So this was a uh, slam dunk of a trade because you could have done this trade the night before, at the morning of that particular market. You could have done that many different times because the rain kept on coming at Ascot and the rain was awful. Um, it, I actually took some imagery um, of the conditions at the start of the race because I thought, well, this would be an interesting point to illustrate. But the conditions were pretty awful at Ascot. Um, as a consequence, you would lay Sea of Class because it's unlikely that the price is going to come in and the price would just drift and drift and drift um, until it reaches a point at which people think that it's a more accurate reflection on its chances of winning on ground that it doesn't like. Now, if you would have laid Sea of Class when Haggis came out and said, um, I don't think that he's going to run, what would have happened if he didn't run was all of those bets would have been void. You wouldn't have won or lost anything. So really, there was nothing to lose. Lay Sea of Class, uh, the conditions were poor and getting worse, the price was going to drift, and then if it did run, um, you'd probably see that the price, the drift would accelerate, and then you could exit your trade. So yeah, it was um, an interesting uh, race to uh, partake in. Um, it was one of those rare occasions where everybody was flagging up all of the issues, and I, I remember when it was declared that it was going to run, there were quite a few comments around saying, you know, I can't believe that they're actually going to run it. But it sort of made obvious sense, really in terms of the way that uh, the market went. You knew that it didn't like the ground, you knew that its chance was going to decline if it did run on ground that was unsuitable, therefore the price was going to drift, so you could do a nice little trade off the back of it. So yeah, you know, weather has, it has an impact in a number of different sports in a number of different ways. I've given you three examples there, uh, cricket, golf and racing where you can use that to your advantage. And of course everybody looks at the weather, everybody's an expert on the weather. So the ability to uh, interpret or outthink what's likely to happen in a market will be directly linked to the weather forecast, which you're probably going to be looking at anyhow. But if you look at it in a little bit deeper detail, then you can probably pull off a decent trade.